when I catch people staring at me, I assume they're taking notes on how to be awesome. Hi, this is Coach MK, and this is The Morning Mantra. Hi, my name is MK Fleming. I'm a run coach based in Denver, Colorado, but this isn't a podcast about running exactly. Don't tell my clients, but we're never really talking about the running. When you know a craptastic event is coming, it helps to have a mantra to keep you centered and focused as you move through it. You don't have to be an athlete to be hashtag coached and loved by Coach MK. And if you are here, then you are hashtag winning at life. Today's mantra is, we don't need no education. We don't need no education. One of my favorite celebrity gossip websites has a recurring feature they call Photo Assumption, which explores which photographs editors will choose to match with stories, which ones are approved by a celebrity's publicist, and which ones are definitely not. We make a lot of assumptions about people, about situations, about things in general, without looking for context. Editors of magazines know that. And this is why publicists and media training is an industry in and unto itself. A celebrity like Liam Helmsworth knows exactly what photographers are going to be looking for when he leaves the house the day after rumors start swirling about the demise of his marriage. He could stay inside. He could stay home. He could order takeout. He could use Instacart. But instead, he leaves the house without his wedding ring on to buy groceries. That's a small detail. I've done that before, right? Totally normal? Mm -mm, mm -mm, Not really. These details are not small ones for anyone who's used to even a modicum of public scrutiny. If rumors are swirling about your marriage, your publicist is going to have a hard time credibly denying those rumors if you keep leaving the house without your wedding ring on. So your publicist is going to school you on not making his or her job harder. Therefore, in these moments, we can safely assume This photo was staged and take it as implicit confirmation that the rumors are in fact true, as well as assume that the photos were staged with Liam's cooperation. These games are fascinating to me because I'm from a small town. As Miranda Lambert says, everyone is famous in a small town. And this is really true, you guys. Everyone knows your business, whether you want them to or not. And the strategies that celebrities employ to navigate the world can look a lot like the things families in small towns do to hide things. Explanations are always out in the open. The onus is on you to do the work. Here's what I mean. The first thing you need to do is acknowledge it silently and internally when you realize that what you see isn't consistent with the facts that you're aware of. And then step two, ask yourself why that is or consider what facts you may be missing before calling it out, if ever. This is what we mean when we say, this is none of your business. It's not that people are always lying, but they don't necessarily owe you a whole lot of truth. So the person who fails to go through that two-step process above, that person isn't very well regarded. These are necessary social skills, and I've come to realize they aren't particularly common ones. There's something really beautiful about someone who sees you and who hears what you aren't saying, understands what you can't say, and offers help without forcing a conversation. Like the farmer who would leave baskets of tomatoes and corn on our front porch during a period when it was well known that my previously affluent family was in crisis. Everyone knew that those were my mother's favorite foods. Everyone knew that she wouldn't and she couldn't accept charity. Everyone knew why and everyone knew that we desperately needed it. Those little baskets, it was like checkmate in a game of three-dimensional chess. Now, I do think that most people are good and truly do want to help other people. I just don't think social skills mean in the big city what we think they mean in a small town. Conflicts arise when people get real excited to solve problems and neglect to do it in a way that affirms the humanity of the person they're trying to help. Outside of a small town setting, you aren't playing three-dimensional chess anymore. We don't have enough context. We don't have enough knowledge. Your assumptions are less likely to be correct because you have less information to go on. 
Attempts to insert your help into situations will usually escalate them or worse, insult the person that you're trying to help. Teach man to fish. It's better than giving him fish, right? Well, unless that person is axed directly for money. The assumptions embedded into what you offer to help them do, the education you want to give them might not be kind and the help might not be helpful. Here's some examples I've encountered recently. It's why most of my charity work is done silently behind the scenes and almost never in large groups. Number one, trying to teach fat people about nutrition, which totally ignores the why behind their food selections. Trying to teach a poor person how to save money. In fact, ignoring why these people are systematically unable to get ahead and stay there. Trying to teach a homeless woman about the benefits of breast milk, completely ignoring all the reasons why she would want to feed her child formula instead. Trying to encourage the slow kid to try harder, ignoring how hard they may actually be working and trying, both mentally and physically in that moment. And finally, trying to teach a person how to be grateful when they've just told you that your help isn't helpful. The list is really long, but I'm telling you guys, I can talk about these things for days and I'm going to have to in therapy because those incidences I just outlaid, they were triggering to me. They triggered 20 year old anger. My inner child is Mary Catherine Brooks from Smith County, Tennessee. And once she set foot in a big city, she was in awe of the assumptions people made about her. Where are you from? Was always the first question. And then they thought they knew me. All kinds of people tried to teach me all kinds of things. And the help that was offered was very rarely helpful. It was almost never what I asked for. It was usually condescending and insulting. That help left permanent scars. How can you not know? <gasps> what do you mean you don't have this? <gasps> when things are at your fingertips, when facts... And situations are really obvious to you. That reflects your privilege, not the other person's drive, work ethic, problem-solving capabilities, or intellect. There are all kinds of unwritten rules and expectations, codes of conduct that other people know. To them, these things were basic. They were unaware of their privilege. My ignorance, in their mind, was inexcusable. How did I miss all these basics? I'm so stupid. They didn't know that my high school guidance counselor existed for teenage pregnancies, serious cases of abuse and neglect, how to get a GED if your family needs you to work. We didn't know that SAT prep courses were a thing, that Georgetown wouldn't offer remedial math to help me close the gap, that office hours were free and open to everybody, that the good internships would require suits and not offer paychecks, that a computer lab existed, but laptops were still required. I was kind of like a zoo animal, the exotic pet redneck bred in captivity who didn't know basic things about the world around her. The story, no matter what I did, it was about my accent, my deficiency, not the privileges of the people around me because I was outnumbered. And that story was underpinned by casually ugly assumptions about me, my background, and the people I love. This is way more common than we care to admit. The line between photo assumption and being a judgy bastard can be really thin, depending on the context, the assumptions themselves, and the help you want to give. We can make a lot of correct assumptions about a photo of a celebrity who isn't hiding from photographers during a turbulent time in his marriage. It's a lot harder to make correct assumptions about the people in our neighborhood, no matter how frequently we interact, no matter how much we may identify with their challenges. It's easy to lecture people when we think their issues are obvious. It's hard to listen when they tell us that we aren't helping. It's hard to believe that we are not in the same place as another person when we occupy the same space. The farmer I referenced, she died earlier this year. And I often wonder if her kids still play three-dimensional chess. Now, our problems were not solved by those baskets, but our humanity was affirmed. And that was helpful. That kind of help, the helpful kind of help, it's pretty rare. So, the mantra. 
in those moments when you find yourself on the receiving end of advice or education that you didn't ask for, the kind of help that isn't helpful, I want you to hear Pink Floyd playing on my karaoke machine in the back of your head singing, we don't need no education. And then school that person who is talking to you, tell them exactly why they are wrong, what your limiting issue is, and explain what it is in fact that you actually need. Then tell them to check their own understanding as well as their privilege before they try to solve another issue with educating you. They might need to do their homework before they show up next time. Now, the flip side, if you see a problem and you want to help, understand that what you want to give and what would actually be helpful are more than likely mutually exclusive. This is what we mean when we say do your homework. Go learn a little bit about the situation, preferably from those who are in it. Ask about why. Meet them where they are and then see what you have to offer. Keep an eye open and look for that spot where what is needed and what you are able and willing to give intersect. Like the customer who cancels her standing order for corn and tomatoes. You can't solve her problems and you can't do this for everyone. You shouldn't be expected to. You deserve to be paid for your work. But the little girl who indirectly receives your act of kindness may never forget it. Being able to eat tomato sandwiches instead of a butter sandwich, it's still luxurious to me today. Those acts were never forgotten, even if I didn't get to thank her properly in her lifetime. But that's what happens when help is actually helpful. You are coached, you are loved, and you are winning at life. And you are definitely winning at life if you subscribe to my Nuzzle Nut newsletter, follow me on Facebook, or follow me on Instagram. Feel free to do all three. 